This is Brain's Journey, and welcome back to another function lecture in our new series. All right, I apologize. I haven't uploaded for a month, more than a month now, because my personal circumstances have changed. I haven't gotten the windows of time that I used to to be able to record these lectures. Um, so I'm implementing a new schedule to be able to get them out faster, to be able to get them all the series laid out as fast as possible. Um, I have a new upload schedule where I'm going to be bulk recording on the weekend and then staggering uploads throughout the week. So hopefully the way that I've set it up, I won't miss a single lecture. Um, so I know you guys have been waiting for the function series. I know I promised the function series in the last video and I never delivered well. Here I am. We're back. The videos are going to be going in full force from now on. So it won't be a problem. Don't worry about it. Today we're going to be talking about the first two functions out of eight in model A. We're going to be talking about the ego, which means the base and the creative function. We're going to be talking about the base first and the creative, and then discussing what their properties are as a group. So let's begin. First off, we want to look at the base function. The base function is the dominant function of the individual. It is what they prize the most in their life. Um, you may see it also called the leading function or the program function, depending what kind of articles you read, literature, whatever. Um, like I just said, it is the most dominant function. It is the individual's preferred mode of operation. It is what they do upside down at four in the morning. It really does not go away, um, and it is the continued presence in their life what makes up the core of their personality, basically. Um, it is the most comfortable state of mind. It is the most comfortable perspective on life. Um, behavioral mode, everything that is correlated to this base function um, will be essential in a person's personality. Um, as well as that, it also projects a set of core values, perhaps as we go through our lives, we learn a set of core values that are attached to our ego and specifically the base function. And those core values, um, we bring those to society. We'll take what we learned through this function and bring it outwards as a form of compensation. Um, and it also, it, this determines intertype compatibility as well. This has a huge part in intertype compatibility. Um, if somebody cannot maintain that core value expression, um, if somebody does not like receiving what you have to say about your core values, your base function, um, that has a lot to say about intertype relations and intertype compatibility as a whole is who and who isn't responsive to the activity of our base function. Um, but we're gonna get into all that way down the line. You don't have to worry about that for now. Another part of the base function is that it is seen as crucial to personal development. It is crucial in interpersonal areas. Um, it matters a lot in, in our skills, our careers, what we go into our lives doing. Um, and so we see it as crucial to our personal development. Yes, I'm going to develop the base function so that I can continue to get career opportunities, so that I can continue to form beneficial relations with like-minded people. Um, and so it is seen as something that must constantly be applied, optimized, you know, engaged in, etc. Um, and then the last thing I kind of wanted to go over with the base function is that it is effortless. We do you know, always use it. Like I said, the upside down four in the morning analogy is not necessarily so much of an analogy sometimes. Um, it is very effortless. We do it all the time and it is satisfying. It is something that gives us great personal satisfaction, something that's always constantly on, always giving us satisfaction. We like to do this thing, basically, is, is the main lesson that you want to learn with the base function. Um, so moving on from the base, uh, we have the creative function. And the creative function is a primary instrument for the base. It is how we apply the base's activities. You know, the base could be isolated on its own. It could be doing its own things. But the creative is what is really going to be um, externalizing those conclusions that you form in the base function. So, for example, if you're an introvert, what you're going to be doing in the base function is going to be related to the self. And then the creative function would be extroverted. It would be externalizing those conclusions that you form with the base to society um, then in contrast, if you're an extrovert, your base function would be going out and interacting with the environment, and then the creative function would be responsible for creating a beneficial context for those interactions to be supported in. Um, so it is the instrument of the base function, essentially. Um, it has less magnitude than the base because, it, like I said, it's just an application. It's not the base. It's not the base's activities, but it helps the base, and we really enjoy using it. 
Um, that said, it is not going to be as present in the individual's life. It's not going to be as noticeable, um, but it is still up there as one of the most dominant portions of the person's personality. Um, it can tend to be subordinated as a tool. Um, I'm kind of beating a dead horse here. I mean, I've said that it's a tool over and over again, but it's a tool. Um, we value it, uh, we express it a lot, um, but at the end of the day, it is just something that we use to apply what we learn in the base function. Um, it's not necessarily seen as an end in and of itself, um, but we do, we do value it. Um, and then the end I wanted to talk about, it's, it's situational, it's not always on. Like the base function is always going, it's always moving, it's always doing something. But the creative function, um, there are times where you'll find yourself using your creative function day and night, and perhaps there'll be times where you find that you won't be using your creative function at all in favor of other functions. Um, it really is a situational function, it really is something that we engage based on what is happening in the moment and day to day, rather than just, I use this all the time. Um, so we've gone over the basics of the two functions, and now let's see how they're put together in Model A, the horizontal blockings. Um, that's what we call the two functions paired together, we call them blockings. Um, so you can see this is function number one over here, and then function number two. Um, I'm going to be putting one of these in every video just so you guys can see uh, what these look like in the model, so you can pick it out from a diagram. Um, so the combination of these two functions, this forms the ego. And this is not like the ego in, in Freudian psycho, psychoanal psychoanalytic theory, excuse me, um, or Jung's ego. It is more or less just a name that is used to refer to the concept. Um, it's not actually the ego, it's just kind of the main idea. It's like we want to notice that it is like a center, more or less. It's the most obvious portion of the personality. It's what this person is bringing to the world. You're going to see these two functions when you identify a person's type, sociotype. You're going to see the, their expression, um, their ideation, um, their creation. Everything is going to be seen. Um, it is socially demonstrative. It is something that we actively, readily present to other people. Like I said, a projection of our core values. Um, and so it is just, it is something that is um, present in society. It is something that we do, like a career, like an interpersonal relations, things like that, socially demonstrative. Another thing is that it desires to play a role and gain recognition. It does. It wants to have its own place in society. You know, every sociotype being a cog in the wheel of society, every sociotype has something to contribute. So the base and creative play a vital role. Um, in maintaining the workings of society, and they expect to gain recognition in some way, shape, or form for their actions in these functions. Um, it's an area of strong competence and strong individualism. We think we're better off without receiving any help in these functions. We do them just fine. We're strong in these functions. We, we manage to do everything by ourselves, and so it is something that we kind of project outward rather than receive help from. And the last point that I want to talk about with the ego is that it rarely feels shame or inadequacy, even if it, it has made a mistake somehow, because it knows that it can always get back up, it can always, you know, portray strong behavior um, and, and maintain a strong, competent center of personality. You're not going to feel sh too much shame or inadequacy here, because this is something that you view as being integral to your worldview. Um, so yeah, we've gone over the basics of the base function, the dominant, the center of the personality, the creative, the main application for the base, and then the ego, putting it all together, the most obvious portion of the personality. Um, next video will be up on Tuesday, and it will be on the super ego functions, the role and the polar, um, also known as the vulnerable, um, so stay tuned for that. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button, comment if you uh, have any observations to make or questions. Um, and I will see you all in the next lecture.